Alright, so you're going to want to make a few useful inventions that are going to really help you out here. Alright, so what we're going to do is make the jet hover right now. This is the fastest leg in the game. You need the relaxation fountain, the candle, and the firehouse, which is right here. Say cheese! So this will make Steve significantly faster. Um, there is one other one that's a little bit faster, but it's kind of hard to control. Um, it's the buggy. So, to make the buggy, what you need is the belt, the car, and the System 5 WP2. So this is actually even faster than the, um... Say cheese! This is even faster than the, uh jet hover, but it's a lot harder to control, so you can play around with it and just kind of figure out which one you prefer. So I'm going to show you how to make the Nova Cannon 3. Uh, we don't have the picture required for the fourth one until basically halfway down the 8th uh, eighth, eighth chapter, but we can still make a pretty good weapon now. So we need a picture of the sun, the moon column and a picture of the stove. And this will make us the Nova Cannon 3. Yeah, it works. This is basically the strongest weapon that we can get right now. Looks like I need to go buy some holy elements, huh? <laughs> it's good that we have holy stones. All right, so we're also going to make another high-end energy pack for Steve. This one should be the strongest in the game. Alright, so we're going to get a photo of... Alright, so we're going to use Flower Chandelier. Light of the Luna Stone. And we're going to use the photo of Pot. Yeah, it works! That gets us the Triple Urn Pack. This is the strongest pack in the game. Nice, 300 HP. And this buggy is very fast, it's kind of hard to control, I don't like it. So I usually use the um, jet hover. So Steve is pretty much ready to go, but there's still a few more things we need to make. We need to have the ability to make bombs whenever we need to just so that we can get through all the floors without running out of items. So we're going to start off with candle. You know take candle. <laughs> Once we have candle, we are then gonna come back and use pot again. It's right here. Now we're going to use the weapon shop sign. This gets us the low end bomb. So we are going to come all the way back up here and grab candle again. Where is it? It's right here. Kinda. There we go. Alright, so now we are going to get coal and egg. That gets us the improved bomb. Say cheese. And now we are going to do one more. Alright, so we're going to do candle again. If we can find it. Now oh, we need cinders too. It's a candle. And we are going to use oven. Which is all the way down here. Now we went past O. It's like I don't know the alphabet or something. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we, went, we did it again. Where is it? Oh, uh, yeah. There's only three, three photos that actually start with an O. And that's the final bomb. Yeah, it works! 
So you basically need to be able to make this stuff whenever you need. Like if I use this entire stack, I need to be able to do it again. And same thing here. And same thing here. This can get kind of expensive, but it's fine. It's worth it. You just need to be maxed out on materials. And it's a lot easier if you use the infinite money glitch. It'll save you a lot of time. So if we come down to Morton's shop, you can also buy bombs, improved bombs, and final bombs. In fact, I find it to be slightly cheaper to max your stacks of this stuff here. So what I usually do is come here after every single floor and purchase these things here. And then I have all my flame crystals, wind crystals, and gunpowder for uh, crafting bombs in case I run out mid-floor. I just kind of find this to be the cheapest and fastest way. You can also buy ride pod fuel and gunpowder. You don't have to go to the Palm Brings Church, you can also go talk to Priest Bruno in uh, Valence Valley, but I recommend that you come here and max your Holy Water stack and your Medusa's Tear stack. Some enemies will petrify you, you may as well pick up soap and antidote drink as well. Um, this is just to remove any negative effects on your character, and the Holy Water is really good against undead enemies, which can also save your bombs. And I mean, this is a lot cheaper than bombs. Even if you're using the infinite money glitch, the infinite money glitch takes a lot of time, and it's very tedious. So if you can save some money and use the Holy Water, and then just having more items in general is not a bad thing, considering how many items some enemies can take. So just some advice for saving you a lot of time with leveling your monster. Come over to Mulane and buy two thorn armlets. So what you're going to do with these is you're going to actually get them to plus five. And you're going to build them up. This'll, this won't take you long at all. Uh, for the first level, literally one monster in the Moonflower Palace will give you a full level. It'll take like two floors to get these both to plus five. Once you do that, you can throw some synthesis points in there if you like. You pretty much just break them down, put them on to Monica's sword and to her armband. This is also just a good way to increase their stats in general. But once you've done this, they'll both get an experience up boost, which will also transfer over to monster form, which makes it about 20% faster to level your monster up. So I highly recommend that you do that. It'll save you. It'll save you some time, a noticeable amount of time. All right, so come on over to Adele and speak with her. And you can buy some stuff from her. So some of these things here you can use for taking care of enemies. Some of them have decently high stacks and I definitely recommend that you max out your stacks of these items just so you lower the chances of you running out when, you, uh, when you're when you going for the metal. So I recommend that you always keep Pow with you, because of the fact that he makes it so you can always see the full map no matter what. This is outstandingly helpful, and it'll save you a lot of time and hassle. So I really recommend you keep Pow with you. I recommend that you pick up at least two of every single lure that you have the option to buy from all of you. Um, the spinner is mainly what you're going to use for fishing and the minnow as well. But having all four of these things you can just kind of make a surplus of materials. Or you can make a surplus of these stacks to then just sell them for Gilda later when you need it and you will need it. Basically every floor using bombs costs like 40 or 50k. So you're also going to want to have a lot of bait from Fabio. So you're going to want to have a lot of carrots. This will help in Balance Valley. Uh, you're going to want to have petite fish as well, which will help out in um, Vinicio and uh, Sindane as well. But you're also going to be using the lure rod. If you can't figure out the lure rod and you just can't get it to work, I will give some advice on it later in the video. And you can still catch all the fish you need with the bait, but it takes longer. Maybe. 
depending on how used to the war rods you can get. I do recommend that you max your stack of mighty healing from Dr. Dell. Alright, so for buying crystals, just come on down to the Starlight Canyon's future. And you can basically, you can max these stacks, which I actually really recommend you do if you want to completely eliminate the risk of you running out of items while you're mid-dungeon. So because of the fact that we need this crystal to um, purchase the, uh, to make the bombs I mean, it's very recommended that you make super high stacks, you max your stacks of items before you go into the dungeon, and then you have this reserve of materials so that you can then make all of these items still. So yes, this is ridiculously grindy, which is why I use the infinite money glitch, because it saves you an excessive amount of time, which could be used to just go and do the metals. So it's up to you, but this is pretty much everything that I am doing to uh, prepare myself for the metalhead trophy. So I will see you guys in a sec. So I haven't actually done a single thing of combat at all whatsoever with this. I got him up to level 26. So now we have the option to change class. I recommend just making an extra save before before you get him to level 26, just so there's, just so nothing bad goes happen. I can't speak, just so nothing bad happens. But anyway, he's an ice gem run now. And um, we were then given an item that we can use for spectrumization to increase every stat. All right, everybody, here we are. So we got every single metal except for one floor, which I am going to show you. So this took a very long time, probably about 10, 10 real life hours for just this place, I gotta say. Well, that's at least what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, this, this took quite a while. Okay, so that's our last floor. Okay, so, monster transformation. This, uh, this kind of sucked leveling. Um, what I did was, I went to the first floor, and I just ran through the ancient wind, like, 57 times, to level up the Gemron monster. I found this to be the most efficient way because that floor gives the most experience and there's no mimics so you can theoretically ignore all the chests as long as there's no um, gate that you need to unlock. So I found this to be the best floor for you to run. Level up the gem run because it's basically the strongest one here. It can stun enemies on attack and it deals the highest damage and it's safe, it's safe from attacking by range. And the fact that it also moves really quickly is even better. So when you're in there doing the uh, item floors, make sure you only use improved bombs and final bombs and then like poison apple, stoneberry, heartthrob cherry, and bomb nuts. Well, these are kind of useless. Uh, gooey peaches. Uh, the reason for this is because you can buy all of these items. Uh, items like the Holy Stone, the Wind Stone, the Flame Stone, Chill Stone, Lightning Stone, you can't buy these. So you really want to save these for the Zelmite Mines. Um, it'll just make your life a lot easier. Because actually farming these things is a ripe pain. And it's going to take a very long time to actually max these stacks of items but everything else you can just purchase, so it's a much better idea to use them. You can also craft them here, as we've shown earlier in the video. So, now that that explanation is done, all we gotta do is go in here and just blast everything. <laughs> I'm just going to speed this clip up for you guys. Just to slow it down for a sec, 
I did actually try coming in here when I had my Gemron at only level 40, when he was still just a uh, Ice Gemron. So the uh, reason that you can actually deal damage when you're at the lower level, but the damage is very, very low. I did the math, and to take out one of the blue knights in here, it would literally take over 100 blasts to take the thing out at that level. So, that's not feasible, and your monster is just going to run out of his HP bar by the time you're done. So you really do have to grind up to level 51 here, unfortunately. I was trying to save time if possible to uh, make it so we can just go to... The Zelmite mines and do it because there's more experience to be earned there. It would have been more efficient to level up there instead, but you're pretty much forced to get to at least the third transformation here. All right, back to speeding it up. Try to walk through this place just as Monica so that you aren't using the uh, monster HP bar because you really don't want to run out of it, especially if you're all the way at the end. If you transform into a new monster, you do have a fresh bar, but I don't know why you would want to level up a second monster. <laughs> Please don't do it to yourself. And once you get to the transformation, there's no point in playing a lower end monster. You pretty much just need to pay the, play the highest level one because it does the most damage. So yeah, I'm literally doing seven times the damage that I was before, so this is a lot more reasonable to actually doing this. This is why playing as the Gemron is good, because you basically stun lock everything whenever you're attacking it. That's the most practical monster to play. So if you get wiped out like that, it may or may not be the end of the world depending on if you have resurrection powder or not. Luckily I do, so we are gonna go ahead and use that. <laughs> yeah, I got a little careless. I was only playing with one hand so I could take a sip of coffee, so that was kind of my mess up, but we're still fine. And uh, resurrecting yourself does not reset your monster meter, so you really have to be conscious of how little time you actually have to do this. It's about like 10 minutes of staying in constant monster form, that is. And that is all of them. Now, let's see if we can uh, get the last medal on our first try. Okay, we have five shots for this. It looks like we're going to need every single one of them, actually. So, this doesn't look too bad, so I think it's possible. Okay, let's just go check out. I want to go see what the map over here actually looks like, so I can kind of determine where to aim. Okay, yeah, so it's good I took a look. So I think I kind of understand what the best shot to do here is. So... I don't actually really want to hit it too hard. So let's do... Uh, that might not be hard enough. Or maybe it's okay. It might be fine. And we're screwed. Oh! That... As long as we can hit it. Oh, that is so beautiful. <laughs> that That's luck. That's that's straight up luck. Uh, this camera angle, though. I'm not so sure about that. Okay. This camera angle is pretty terrible, but... I guess that's just kind of what happens sometimes. Okay, well, as long as we don't hit it too hard, it might be okay. Okay, I think it kind of worked. Hmm. 
So yeah, it seems like the best option is to just kind of get it over this little hump right here. Okay, that's pretty much everything I could have hoped for, actually. That might be a little too hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least it's blue, so it might be a straight shot. Yes. Alright, let's just turn this map off. That was not a nice shot because it actually just kind of messed me up. So now we need to redo this floor. Oh well, you can't win them all, I suppose. Well, that's our last speed of metal for this place anyway. <sighs> it feels good to be done all that. <laughs> I want to leave this dungeon like a normal person. I don't know. Because I've spent 40 medals, I've I'm kind of just been worried about whether or not the trophy will glitch after I get every medal. I don't think it will, and I really hope it doesn't, because I will never do this grind again. But uh, it, it's hard to deny that I, I am kind of worried about it, so... We'll see. I'm sure it'll probably be fine. I haven't really had any glitches so far, like any bad glitches, so I don't think it'll be a problem. Alright, so that is every single metal in the Moonflower Palace. Um, most of these are self-explanatory. I already gave advice for the items and the speeda. Everything else is going to be easy enough to uh, just kind of get done. And um, if you're just trying to do the fastest monster defeat time, it's easy to just hop on Steve and have him take care of everything. That is everything. So, it's only natural to go and fight the boss now. Well, we're gonna just kinda cut to the next part. For this video anyway, because this is the Metalhead video. For bats, I really recommend that you just use a final bomb. It'll just save you so much hassle, just please do it. it I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by luring enemies. So, I'm gonna get this guy to follow me all the way over here. If he stops barfing into his hand. Okay, this guy's just being okay, there we go. Making okay, he's running at us now, that's good. He will he will kinda come towards us if we just give him some time. Come on, friend. Let's go. I believe in okay. I I still believe in you, even if you barfed on me. There we go. Alright, so that should be close enough. There's a bat. Okay, let's get this guy to come over to us now. Yes, this is incredibly tedious, but it's so you can maximize your items without wasting it. I have a stack of holy water, so on these specific enemies I could just easily use that. But if these weren't that kind of enemy, let's say they're all rams or something, get them close together, and then you do your final bombs. Okay, I used that one a little bit too early. Let's just take this guy out, all right? All right, there we go. They're getting kind of close together. I don't want her to die. It's tedious and it can take a little bit of doing to get working, but once you do, I thought I healed. Okay, well, Max can do the same thing anyway too, it's fine. This is a horrible example, but it still gets the job done, I suppose. All right, Max, you're up. What can you do? You cannot die, that would be great. There we go, final bomb. They're all done now. That's basically all I wanted to show you. So try to bring enemies as close together as possible. Right. That takes care of you guys. This'll be a must for when you're in the end shaft of this place. And when you have the enemies with 10K HP, that's when this is even more mandatory. 
Alright, see you soon. Okay, so for the Zelmite Mines, this place isn't that bad. It's really just the item floors, so I highly recommend you just clear through this place and you get every single map open. Now, start off with doing all the item floors. Do the ones that are more easily doable. This way you can just use bomb items like the final bomb or the improved bomb. Just things that you can repeat. Things that you can create and go by very easily. For things that uh, you can't just go by or craft like lightning stones or whatever, you really don't want to use those until you absolutely have to. So, everything there, all, the, all these floors here, you should be able to go through it without needing to use those crystals, like lightning or flame crystals. Uh, over here, it's still kind of easy. Mummy Heaven, make sure you just have holy water, you can use a lot of those on that floor. Okay, so Ward 3, I had to use a few. For Firm Belief, I had to use quite a few as well. Still try and use all of your gooey peaches, all your heartthrob cherries and all that stuff before you use it. But against the Tiamat, just use like lightning stones. They're usually going to be your best bet for those guys, unfortunately. Ultimate Snake. This is definitely the hardest floor. That's why I'm going to show you guys this one. I'm going to leave the whole footage of this dungeon in this video to show you exactly what I do. So, I'm just going to show you my items quickly. You're going to want to make sure that you max your fruit from Adele, buy everything that you possibly can. Heartthrob Cherry, Gooey Peach, Poison Apple, and Stoneberry. I have Stoneberry equipped because most enemies are weak against petrification, but getting stopped by this is more resistible. Then I also have Flamestone and Chillstone equipped because we're going to go take out the uh, little bomber guys first. They're the ones who are the worst to deal with because they'll shoot out their explosion. If it damages another enemy, you won't get the metal. Okay. So, also, I recommend using Max for this. I, For the rest of the dungeons, I use Monica simply because I can just swap over to Monster Form to pick up the experience to save some time with that grind. The reason I'm going to use Max is because his throw animation is very slightly faster. And when you're up against the enemies that'll shoot those big balls that'll explode and deal damage to other enemies, that's a problem. You really don't want that to happen. So I don't have max stack of all the windstones and whatnot, but we, it will be good enough. So we will be able to beat the floor with this stuff here, but you still want to try to use it as minimally as possible. But since this is the last floor, don't be afraid to use everything on the last floor. Okay, so before you attempt this, please save. Make sure you save. Just make a brand new, fresh save. That way you can reload it and you'll still have all your items and you don't have to go grind for it. Because grinding for the things that you can't buy is a real pain and it requires a lot of luck and patience. So it's better to just not have to do that. All right, so let's go and do it. And there's no floors over here since I showed that earlier. All right, ultimate snake. So the way I'm going to personally do this is I am going to ignore every enemy that's not the tank because I need to take them out first to just ensure that they don't shoot out their bombs or anything and really mess your day up. Okay, so this map layout's not horrible. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that thing for now. Okay, there's one or two up there. So, unfortunately... There's two enemies close together. Just immediately go to the Iron Ghost and just throw three of these things at it. It'll take them out. So we can just ignore that mob for now. We'll come back later. There's five or six of the Iron Ghost things in here or whatever. Just take them out first. Circle around the entire map and handle those tanks first because they're the ones who are going to really mess your day up and make you have to redo this. So if you can just take them out of the dungeon before they do anything to mess your day up, then it's basically smooth sailing after that. That thing right there. That thing right there is the problem. If it blows up and deals damage to a monster, you're done. It doesn't disappear after they shoot it, so you know. 
And if you just die, that's also a problem. You can't win them all. And we can still get by with that. But do not let him deal damage to another monster. If that happens, you're just going to have to redo it. So we're just going to give this stuff to Monica. We missed, but we got it. It's fine. Alright. Might as well pick this up. We are going to eat something so that we don't need to redo this. I'm actually basically out of every item, so I just have some bananas and then drink some water. Oh, I actually just figured that out. If you eat bananas in monster form, you don't get thirsty. That's probably not intended, but hey, <laughs> you'll learn something new, I guess. Oh, that's pretty convenient, actually. Sweet. All right, here's another one. I want to handle him. If you get really unlucky and it's like this guy in a in a big pack of mobs, that's a problem. But you just need to try and get rid of these iron ghosts. They're what's gonna mess you up the worst. The reason that I also recommend doing the item floors first is because then if you're in a scenario for where you've ran out of items and you just can't beat the floor because you don't have enough equipment, you can always just go run the other floors for the other metals, open up chests, and then you have a chance to get more stones. Like you saw, I opened up that chest earlier and got five lightning stones, and I opened this chest now and got five holy stones. So you're not like completely screwed or anything if you run out of items, but it's just better to uh, try and get the worst stuff done first. You're going to already have to do it anyway, so you may as well just get it done sooner rather than later. I want to open this chest because a compass will never hurt, or a magic crystal. Oh, that's what it was too, beautiful. Okay, that's not good. And that's not too great either. Alright, we gotta handle this guy quick. And you can also paralyze them, so that's something that can help you out a bit. That's why I had the stone berries equipped. The cherries don't work on them, from what I remember, but the stone berries do, because petrification is stronger than stop in this game. Take your time when you open chests, just to make sure the explanation mark is there, because you really don't want to have to, uh, don't really want to accidentally shoot off a thunderbolt and then you gotta redo it. Because if I were to just, even if I didn't damage anything. Okay, that's a problem. As long as it doesn't damage anything, it's fine though. It can damage me, that's okay. Just not another monster. Lucky drop, but we uh, do not have enough room for it. So I guess it was a pretty big stack, actually. Okay, so this guy right here is not one. So then if there's another one at all, it's going to be in the top left corner. If that's the case, we don't really have much to worry about anymore. Yeah, so they're all done now. So we can kind of relax a little bit at this point, which is good. So we're just going to put our final bombs back on our heartthrob cherries. As long as you actually have every single item floor complete, you really don't have to be cautious with your items if you don't want to be. And you don't really need them to try and speed through floors quicker because Steve is just overpowered if you have the Samurai Sword or the Nova Cannon 4. So basically, all the item floors that we do have are done. We got the metal. There's 10 in total in this place, which is a lot, but it is what it is. So since we have all of them, we're just going to kind of go through this place now and defeat everything with items. doesn't matter what item. We can just use our most powerful stuff. So I'm going to just put my wind, wind stones on, for example. 
we can use this to petrify the enemy and to we can then just throw like our good stuff at them, you know, like these stones are do, they do very high damage. As you can see, that's 5k each, so that's good. So we're basically just gonna go through this floor like normal now. King mimics aren't really that hard. Just throw a couple stones at them. So yeah, if you're pretty much confident with this point, you can just kind of skip to the next section of the video or whatever, but I'm just going to keep this part in for anyone who just wants to kind of see me complete it. Enemies like this are... You can use a final bomb to uh, kind of get them down on the ground, and then you can use your more powerful items to attack them when they're low down. It's good against flying enemies. That enemy's throwing fireballs through the wall. Well, not quite through the wall, but he's trying to. <laughs> the final bomb has a very large radius of damage. It's very helpful. Since no enemy in this place can actually deal damage to another enemy now, there's basically nothing to worry about. And I'm confident that we're going to get the medal once we complete this place. You are also able to pick enemies up, and you can, like, I could bring this thing over to uh, the pack of mobs over there, for example, and just kind of take them all out together with final bombs. You are able to do that, because it doesn't actually do any damage. Let's just uh, take this guy down with these things right here. Okay, let's put our lightning stones back on. I'm gonna bring this mob over to the pack so that we can try and take them down together. Okay, we should eat something. Max is already down, we can't afford to let someone else go. There's actually like decent experience in this place, so grinding out the last 15 levels or so on the gem run won't be too bad. Okay, you can just do damage through my block then. Do what you want. Let's just bring this guy over to the serpent and we'll try and take him down together, as long as he doesn't go underground. Okay, we got him right in time. Let's just eat some bananas. We're just gonna stay in Gemron form since it moves faster than Monica does. I've said that like 98 times in my playthrough, but it's just true. You do move faster in Gemron mode. Well, I think all monster transformation modes move faster, but Gemron I know for sure does. And we'll just use the last lightning stone, it's fine. I'll show you what light speed looks like. It's not actually very powerful. It's kind of cool though. It's like a, a weak it's like a weak final bomb, but holy stones in general are more powerful than it. You can try and you can hold on to holy stones if you want, because you can also craft with them, like you can make resurrection powder using them. Although I don't really recommend that, because they are kind of rare to come by. Or the stones are rare to come by, resurrection powder not so much. They do really high damage against monsters. As you can see. I don't think there's anything in the game that actually out DPS's holy stones. I think it's just wraiths now. 
Oh, we got a fat Naga. Oh, sorry. We got a Mrs. Gorgon. <laughs> we'll just bring it on over to the last mob. Slow and steady wins the race. Even when the race is 300 medals long. I, I don't even know how that hit him, but I'm not complaining. There we go. I already have the speed of metal on this floor, so we're not going to teleport there. I am going to cut to the last floor of the dungeon that I need the metal from, though, to show off speed. Uh, see you in a sec. Alright, I'm just recording myself getting the final floor in the Zelmite Mines. We just got to come in here and win the speed. Uh. This place isn't so bad with the speed. Uh. Depending on how your map is laid out, it's not that bad. It's a lot better than Balance Valley. This is an okay map layout, so I think we can do it on this floor. So let's go try for it. I'm just gonna hop on Steve and let him carry us. Some tougher enemies in here, so it'll be a little bit of a longer run. I'll probably just turn speed mode on. Okay, so we got a decent a decent shot right here. It's definitely in the two shot range and we should be able to do this. We just don't want to hit it too too hard. That should be okay right there. And that nice shot may have just screwed us up. Maybe. Okay, we're gonna have to get some decent ricochet action going or something. Okay, so I kind of just have to hope that this here works. Alright, redo. Alright, attempt number four. This is a harder shot, but if we roll the ball underneath the wall, we should be able to get it through. So we don't want to hit this one too hard. This needs to be a ground ball. Sweet, that was beautiful. And now, as long as we don't mess up, which is very possible, because you never frickin' know, and we got it, we're done with chapter eight. That's how you do it. Fourth time's the charm. <laughs> All right, off to chapter five now. Alright, this is my last floor for chapter 5, Walking the Path of Flames. Uh, so basically the actual floor clearing bit for pretty much everywhere is going to be the exact same. You just hop on Steve and you fly through it and you one shot everything. That's pretty much the easiest and best method really. It's just the speed or the fishing that can be annoying. Alright, we're just going to speed through this floor. All right, this is a decent shot for, we have a decent amount of shots for how far we have to go. Don't wanna hit this too hard because we don't wanna get it into the lava, which would be annoying. Although I kinda like it if we actually got it into the room, that would help a bit too. So like, I don't wanna hit this thing too hard because I don't want it to just hit the ceiling and go out of bounds. I'm okay with getting this a little bit closer and giving ourselves just one shot to do it. Oh, we got lucky and the ball is still red. Even if it wasn't, we would be able to bounce it at this distance to keep it or to make it so it turns red again. All right, chapter five is done. Time to go to Vinicio.
All right, so we're doing this floor right here. This is the last one I need to do. We're not showing off speed for Vinicio because it's actually pretty easy here. So I don't think it's really necessary. So we're just gonna kind of speed clear this floor and then I will show you how I get the fishing metal. Okay, so we're just gonna go to basically the deepest part of this beach here, or the furthest out, I guess, which is basically right here in the middle. So you can use the lure rod if you really want to. It's, it's hard to use, and I've never gotten good at it, and I don't feel like really doing that, because you can still catch everything that you need just by using petite fish. Small fish don't eat the petite fish, so it's usually a good bait to use, but you can use the spinner as well. I've only ever been able to catch fish with the spinner. I usually kind of do like left, right, and back. And then some kind of variations of each. Basically you just kind of do this, and eventually a fish will kind of come to you. After like three sets, I'll kind of just gently hit X. To kind of reel it in a little bit, and then redo it. It works sometimes, but not all the time. So, I don't really use the lure rod. This is all I'm going to talk about, the lure rod, because everywhere else I just use the normal bait rod. So, let's just put this thing back on. And we are going to use Petite Fish. So, basically, these are the stats I have on my rod currently. i pretty much just going to be putting points into strength at this point. So, we're just going to throw this out as far as we can. And we just wait, really, and that's it. Eventually, we'll get a big enough fish. All right, we're just gonna catch our fish. That'll give us the centimeter size we need. There we go, perfect. So this was my 10th try. And with my 10th try, I decided to go from a petite fish to an Eevee. And this is what we got. So petite fish or an Eevee will get you a big fish in Vinicio. So cool. Lazy daydreaming fish, that's fine. He gave us our medal, so thank you. <laughs> I will put this thing on. Alright, so we are all... I don't know what that was. We are now off to chapter 3. Alright, so I actually kind of have two floors to do in Balance Valley. I'm just going to get the fishing done in this floor to show you, and then I'm going to go do the speed in the other floor to show you. Um, so Speeda is the absolute worst in Chapter 3. It sucks. It's, it's terrible no matter how you slice it. Sorry to say it, but it's just how it is. This is the place to test your patience for sure. The fishing isn't so bad, which is good because it, it doesn't take very long. You can use a carrot to catch one specific fish, and that fish is usually always pretty big. You can still, of course, use petite fish to catch a big fish, but using the carrot's still a viable option here. We do have to open these chests in case of mimics. It's better to just bite the bullet and open the chest so you don't have to uh, backtrack for three minutes just to open that one chest at the other end of the map because you didn't feel like opening it. The only floor that 100% does not have a mimic in the game will always be the first floor. The first floor will never have a mimic in any dungeon. Alright. We are not going to teleport to the Speeda because we already have it on this floor. Right now we are going to do the fishing metal. We just have to catch a fish that's 58 centimeters or bigger. So in this place, there's really no specific place you should try and go to. Anywhere is fine, really. Just try to get it as far out as you possibly can. And now we fish. Alright. So we caught the fish that we need. It's 1cm over what we got. This was about my sixth attempt. So we got it. It's time to go to the Speeda. Just slightly, not as hard. Beautiful. That's all of the uh, metals that I needed in Balance Valley. 
I showed off everything that I think would be of any value to you. Um, I was a little too excited when I finished the Balanced Valley Speeda, so right now I'm just kind of voicing over it, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's just open up our chest, see what we got, and then we're going to head on over to Sindane. Alright, cool. We will see you in a sec. Alright, so we're going into my last uh, Sindane floor that needs clearing. We just need the time challenge, the metal, and the speeda. Everything else in this chapter is done. Hopefully we have a decent spawn with our map. Yes, we do. So, uh, as you guys can see, there's that kind of rectangle with the circle on the map. That's the best fishing spot that you can get. Um, it's big, it lets you cast your rod far, and you'll be able to catch big fish there easily. Okay. What? How'd that do no damage? That was weird. Oh well. Let's just zoom through here as quick as we possibly can, because we only have four minutes. There shouldn't be any mimics in here, but we're still just going to open the chest anyway. Alright, let's hurry on up. Okay, we got the wipeout metal. Hopefully we get a decent speeda. Yeah, it's basically a straight shot. That's pretty decent. We have four shots to do pretty much a straight shot. So this should be very doable. Ideally. Let's just hop off Steve and we'll give this a try. Okay, so if I have it right, if we hit this decently hard, it should end up in the pathway that we need it to go. Not too hard or it'll just break through the grass and stuff and then we'll be kind of screwed. Okay, that's perfect. That's pretty much perfect, actually. Okay, so we'll hit this decently hard and kind of hope that it'll bounce. That might be too hard now. Yeah. The nice shot is really never a nice shot. In fact, it always kind of screws me over. Although, we should be able to just do a straight shot at this point now, since it's red into blue. Oh, that was a bad time for a lag spike, but looks like it worked out. Perfect. So we got that done, which is good. You are able to hit the speeda over bushes, so you can theoretically knock the speeda from one end of the map all the way to the other end of the map in one shot, but that requires a lot of luck with how the structure of the map is. So let's go open our chest, and then we're going to go to the fishing spot. Gift capsule, not very useful. Even earlier in the game, that's not very useful, but hey. It's the metal that we're after, really. Okay, so this is basically the best fishing pond. So what size fish do we need? We just need to get a 54, that's not too bad. So we're just gonna get our normal rod. Can we put any points into it? Yeah, I'll just do two in strength. All right, so we're gonna just throw a gummy on here and fish. And that's basically it. We're just gonna do this until we catch our fish. The other, the other one um, metal in this part of the forest, I got it on the first try. It seems like fish in here are just naturally pretty big. So hopefully that trend continues. Although, I mean, it was just a one-time thing, so we'll see what happens. All right, we're about to catch the fish that we need for the metal. This is actually my second try. He is so much bigger than we need, but I'm okay with that. We got the fish goal. And that's it. There's no more fishing in the game. There's only one more metal we need, and it is in the sewers, so let's go and get it. Alright, it is time to get the last metal in the game that we need. Well, last two. We just need two. Beat this in two minutes and win at Speeda. There are mimics in this floor, so we're gonna have to deal with that, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's go get it. I, for one, want this grind to just be done and never have to do it again. Because it has just really soured my my love for this game, doing this metalhead grind. And I am just very happy that it's about to be done forever. Okay, let's go. We're super speed mode, we got this.
So this is a very possible shot. I got way too excited after completing this. So I'm kind of just voicing this over now. Again. But pretty much, you're going to see what happens. Boom. It was basically the only time a nice shot's actually been a nice shot. I was ecstatic, to say the least, when this happened. Because, man, this was a grind. And I gotta say that after doing this grind, I, I would just really recommend that you don't do this grind. Because it's just bad. I love this game, and I still do. But this grind here really annoyed me. And it definitely made me like the game a little less. I gotta say, it's probably one of the worst grinds in games I've ever done. And I have a few thousand hours in World of Warcraft, okay? That's how bad the metalhead grind is in my opinion. But I just I just kinda wanna put that out there. This is worth doing if you really want the platinum. But you may end up disliking this game a bit more. See you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.